Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of Ref122 of my team career mode here on the channel with this track house racing team. Today coming our way we have the Baku City Circuit GP here in Azerbaijan. Very excited for this one. One of my favorite circuits on the schedule. Not my uh, top favorite but like I said definitely a top five favorite for me here uh, on the Formula 1 calendar. Now as you can see myself uh, swapping out some uh, parts there in the engine coming into this weekend here. Some parts, parts that are definitely taking some wear that we need to take care of. Coming off of a, a pretty good Monaco GP for us there in the last episode uh, as we made one heck of a last lap pass actually on our teammate of Oscar Piastri now as we head into this Azerbaijan weekend now. Uh, such a fun circuit to drive here now and honestly uh, although it's it's a very kind of straightforward simple circuit it actually feels like one of the more difficult circuits uh, to be able to get it round smooth and, and comfortably as well because when you got very heavy braking zones with the 90 degree left or right handers it just it's it's a little bit more technical uh, than some of these other circuits here so I've always had a bit tougher of a time actually putting up a good pace here in Baku compared to other circuits on the calendar uh, as we come through this castle section overall the car felt pretty good the first lap here in race strategy actually I did not hit uh, the Delta uh, target but we would in lap two three and four so uh, we just kind of found a little bit more pace as this uh, run was going on here now as I was trying to learn this 22 uh, 2022 F1 car on this circuit. A lot of uh, tracks to be looking forward to here in this part of the season with Baku. Then we got my home GP in the next episode of Canada. Then we as well have uh, tracks like uh, Silverstone, Austria, Britain, all coming up as well. Uh, France, so um, and I think I just said Silverstone and Britain in the same go. I, I know they're the same thing. Don't correct me on that. Uh, but we have France as well coming up. Uh, so I'm excited for that here. P17 in practice on the medium compound tire. Wasn't terrible. Wasn't great as usual. So that then we go in towards the qualifying session here and we've had our ups and downs so far uh, in qualifying where sometimes we've been able to just kind of squeak through into Q2 and then we really can't really do anything in Q2 because the car is not fast enough to do much more than that uh, but then there's been other times where we are way behind in Q1 so I didn't quite know what to expect here now as we would get underway uh, for my first lap early on in the session there nearly into the turn one barrier actually there on the exit of the corner here down into turn two you can see so I mean just right Right off the bat, turn one and two, very sloppy for myself. Couldn't hit the turn two apex very well either. And then as we head down through this left and right chicane, got through here a little bit rough as well, hopped up over that curb. So this first lap overall was pretty rough here. Now the third sector uh, in well, last half of the second sector and then the third sector was a little bit uh, better. Uh, but obviously the first uh, sector and a half was so rough that uh, we were all the way down in P20. So we had to make another lap here late in the session. As I was getting control of my car, there's actually a Williams of Alex Halbon into the barrier. I'm assuming he locked up and went straight on into the barrier. So he's actually going to be out of qualifying here at the beginning uh, of our second attempt of a lap here. Now as we uh, go down into turn two for the second attempt, get through there way better. Gain about two to three tenths of a second here. And as we came through this left and right chicane again, uh, another chunk of time that we just gained. Nearly a full second already. Yes, a full second better than our previous lap already into the breaking zone. And we are now about a second and a half better. So we found a lot of time here on this lap now as you actually are going to see behind us yellow flags on the circuit here and it's actually going to be for Lando Norris who's had an accident and a huge hit right there Perez runs into the back of him Norris goes airborne briefly uh, as the two crash and then Sebastian Vettel piles in so all three of them Norris, Perez, Vettel out of qualifying here that's four drivers out of qualifying uh, here in qualifying we come through to cross the line by the way and we do uh, not have the greatest qualifying effort in the world. It's P19. It wasn't what we were looking for. That's where we're going to start. Uh, but a big shunt right there from Norris at the conclusion of qualifying. Uh, does he advance though into Q2? That was the question. Even if he does, he's not going to be able to make a lap. But no, he did not advance into Q2. You can see he was P16. Perez in P15 as well. Uh, a rough one for him there. So, and that's the reason they are out of Q2 because they would have actually made it. Uh, but you can see they're highlighted in red. P. Astri is the first one that actually gets out. So we start P19. Let's head to the grid here after a bit of a wild ending to qualifying here uh, from the Azerbaijan GP. Welcome to you all at home for today's Azerbaijan Grand Prix, a race that in its short history has already proven no stranger to drama and where a fourth row start is just about as likely to give you a podium as pole position. 
was Lance Stroll and Sergio Perez finishing third from there in 2017 and 2018, respectively. Baku City Circuit then. It's an unpredictable 3.7 mile track around the streets of the Azerbaijan capital. 20 turns for our drivers to navigate today, including the infamous Turn 8, one of the tightest and most challenging corners of the season. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Verstappen, Hamilton, Valtteri Bottas, and Magnussen, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, Ocon, and Yuki Tsunoda, Joe, Ricardo. Sergio Perez and Norris, Oscar Piastri, Albon, Golden Boy and Nicholas Latifi, Stroll, Russell, Gasly and Sebastian Vettel starts from the back of the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. Anthony Davidson, a very warm welcome to you as you join me in the commentary box for today's event. We should talk about Alfa Romeo. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Ready to go lights out here in Baku. Two strategies up for grabs here, but we're gonna go with the usual medium to hard compound strategy uh, and hope for the best here. And now as we do move up a few spots from 19th into 17th, our teammate of Piastri up into 15th here uh, as we're ready to go lights out. And once again, Charles Leclerc at the front of the grid. It's unbelievable. He's been on pole with every single episode, I think, so far. It's been absolutely insane what he's been able to do. And I feel like if we just give him one bad race, I think everything could kind of change here, but we'll have to wait and see how today goes in Baku where anything can happen here at this uh, kind of circuit now as it's going to be five red lights and it's going to be a very quick release here as we are lights out and underway and Leclerc has an easy glide down into turn one you can see Verstappen alongside Carlos Sainz there into the corner contact right up the bat between Sainz the Spaniard and uh, Max Verstappen there might be already some wing damage there on that Red Bull in his uh, day where he maybe can put the fight to Charles Leclerc has potentially already come to a bit of a halt here we'll have to find out at the end of this first and opening lap Lewis Hamilton is away well George Russell by the way uh, we never saw it in qualifying because it must have happened when I was off the circuit but he actually had a uh, retirement as well so he had to start at the back now as you can see uh, the Red Bull fighting with the Alfa Romeo in the background I was nearly actually into the barrier now as you can see uh, Joe Guan Yu holding off Perez just behind as well as you got the McLarens of Ricardo Lando Norris as well trying to scrap it out here now uh, as I was not a great start for me uh, unfortunately couldn't do anything I was still behind my teammate of Oscar Piastri but it was certainly not a bad start. You don't have a very long run down into turn one when it comes to Baku. Briefly on board with Piastri right there as we head down towards the uh, little uh, uphill castle section here. Such a uh, treacherous part of the racetrack here, but everybody was able to get through there nice and clean and smooth on this opening lap of this uh, GP. And look at the lead that uh, Charles Leclerc already has over second place of Max Verstappen. I'm pretty confident there's some wing damage there on the Red Bull. And we're about to find out here uh, in a few moments time there. Lewis Hamilton up in fourth place and uh, how about Kevin Magnussen up there in the fifth running position? Bontas there in P6. So, so far, so good uh, day of uh, for those guys here now as we're going to see. Let's keep an eye on Max Verstappen here as we head down this pit straight here as Leclerc is well ahead. Carlos Sainz closing in on the Red Bull here and showing up. There goes Verstappen veering to the left side of the track and he is going to head into the pit lane there to replace his front wing. So he did pick up damage. We'll get a look here momentarily at the contact that potentially happened right there between him and Carlos now as he's going to come in and I would assume put on the hard compound tire. Uh, yes, he does, as well as a new wing and Sergio Perez, his teammates actually, and they're going to do a double stack in there as uh, Lance Stroll in the background fitting as well. Here's the contact on the start between Verstappen and Sainz right there. Sainz makes a mistake there on the entry, pushes a little wide right into the side of Verstappen. Here's the contact here with Perez right to the rear wheel of Bontas and there goes bits of his front wing and Stroll picked up some damage uh, as well. And sorry, not, not on Bontas' wheel, that was on Zhou Guan Yu's rear 
rear wheel uh, from the contact with Perez here as we were now up in 16th place after all that madness and uh, George Russell still behind myself he was looking for the opportunity to get passed by here on lap 3 DRS enabled and we kind of have a, a bit of a DRS train here in the back half of the grid here a back quarter of the grid from Piastri on down and when you get in a DRS train it makes it so much more difficult for even a fast car like Russell to be able to pass until I make a mistake like that I actually clipped the barrier here on the pitch straight and here comes Russell up the uh, right hand side I'm gonna get DRS I open the rear wing uh, but not much of a fight there for the Mercedes of George Russell who's had a rough stretch of races here recently now as he's had actually a bit of a better start to the season I think than Lewis Hamilton did uh, but now Lewis has kind of turned it up here and has been on the podium quite consistently uh, recently now as here goes Vettel up the inside I tried to cover him off down into turn two he lunges one up the inside anyways but we hold him off uh, as I get a little bit of oversteer there on the exit of turn two uh, but we continue on here in P17 behind the British driver of George Russell who is now trying to find a way past his good friend of Alex Albon here into the castle section now everyone just follows the leader kind of deal through here and we actually lost quite a bit of time uh, to some cars up ahead there like uh, the teammate of Oscar Piastri as well as Nicholas Latifi here on lap 9 you can see the McLaren duo of Norris and Ricardo scrapping it out here now as you see Norris trying to hold off Ricardo here into the left hander turn 2 and Norris is going to get the power down but it's going to be Daniel Ricardo probably with the DRS yes it is here now and he's going to lunge back at Norris here along the right side this time so he's going to try to go the long way around here into turn 3 is this going to work here is this a viable strategy here and it looks like it might be because now Ricardo has the edge here into the corner but here we go a little bit of contact maybe wheel to wheel and Norris is actually going to be the one holding on to P11 here uh, at the conclusion of that battle now as we come through to lap 10 we were already getting ready uh, for a uh, round of pit stops here now Pierre Gasly actually into 17th place just behind myself Russell would get past Albon I was able to get past Albon uh, as well here now as Leclerc kicks off the pit cycle here on this 12th lap Carlos Sainz remains on the circuit a typical strategy that we've seen out of Red Bull this season is Leclerc pits first Sainz pits second uh, and it's worked out so far every GP for Charles Leclerc very well Magnuson, he remains on the racetrack as well, or sorry, Schumacher does as Magnuson is in his pit box now as you can see Hamilton leaving now, Magnuson's going uh, as well as a whole bunch of drivers here into the pit lane and I was as well getting ready to come into the pit lane here uh, and throw on a set of hard compound tires and go to the end of this GP. PM3 might be beating me today but the team uh, still kind of favored me here in pitting first of the two of us so uh, we of course take the opportunity, put the hard compound tire on, a little bit of a slow stop right there on the right front you saw them uh, definitely taking a moment to get that right front wheel on so we do give up a little bit of time not what we want to be doing we've had a couple of pit errors so far uh, this season as you see me uh, break and let Perez go here on the cold hard tires and as well that allows me to get DRS pit errors though like that you know right now they don't mean a lot to us because we're not really fighting for much with this track house racing team this whole first season uh, the reality is is we're just pushing to make this car better we're not out here really fighting for much we got a point so far at Miami uh, with a lot of luck on our side now uh, but like I said that's not the main the main push as actually the safety car is going to come out on the circuit you see debris all over scattered there on the exit of turn two so I'm assuming that's what it's for and it was actually Pierre Gasly who runs into the back of the Williams of Nicholas Latifi the wing shatters it goes everywhere debris all over the place safety car comes out here just as the pit cycle had been ramping up here so we were in P20 uh, in the safety car queue you see the engine logo there or icon up by the way that is because of our uh, gearbox it is so worn but I wanted to try and make it one more GP and so far so good we made it majority of the way through this race with the gearbox still intact and no issues so far uh, now as though what has happened here Max Verstappen is out of the race under the safety car he has crashed under the safety car you see the right front wheel in front of the car and here's a replay of what an embarrassing shunt for the defending world drivers champion whose season continues to kind of go on this downfall spiral and it has just gotten worse for Verstappen who's out of the race of first retirement. It's been a surprisingly calm GP and the most chaotic moment has come under the safety car conditions here. Now as we were finally getting ready to go back green uh, coming to lap 17 which means we're going to be left with a 10 lap sprint here.
here. Does anybody have anything for Charles Leclerc? Can Carlos Sainz or Lewis Hamilton put the fight to him? Very unlikely at this point. It's been an unbelievable season for Leclerc. He continues to dominate as he leads away down into turn one. And I was looking for an opportunity to send one up the inside here. And that's exactly what I would do. I would get all the way up to side by side with Albon for 13th place. And we make it happen up into P13. There was a very uh, bold and aggressive move. But we make it work. And George Russell was actually in the pit lane at the beginning of the restart. I don't know why, but that's where he was. So he was way behind Piastri with a lock up there. Down into turn three. A little bit of contact with them now as we're going to be side by side into the corner. He's been outpacing us all race long. Kind of like what he did in Monaco, but kind of like as well in Monaco. Late in the race, we're going to pass him just a lot earlier than what it was in the final lap in Monaco here. Now we still have 10 laps to go. So we get in front of Piastri and immediately I'm asking for an update on the car status there because we did make contact, but it actually there was a bug or something. It didn't actually respond to me, so I didn't really know, and I nearly gave myself wing damage right there into the barrier, but fortunately, we did not hit it now as we continue to run in P12, and then Piastri actually comes into the pit lane here at the conclusion of lap 19, so what has happened there with Oscar, and you're going to see it on board. He was actually in a three-wide battle earlier in the lap here, and he just goes straight into the barrier there, misses his braking zone. Uh, he was three-wide, actually, with Albon and Perez, who's trying to recover uh, and move his way forward there after that wing damage earlier in this GP, so unfortunate for Piastri, whose race has kind of turned into a bit of a downfall, and that's kind of happened to Piastri a few times this season here, uh, as Perez now, he was on the move, he would pass me, we would drop back down to P13, and Piastri actually again comes into the pit lane on lap 23, and I went and looked in the replay system after the race, uh, and could not find why he was in the pits, but he wasn't the only one, there was an Alfa Tori, an Alfa Romeo, as well as a Haas of Mick Schumacher, who all pitted on the same lap, which I couldn't, like I said, find out why any of them actually pitted, there was no contact, no wing damage or anything here. Now, his yellow flag's actually in the background on the track map, and it's actually going to be for Valtteri Bontas there in the Alfa Romeo, a mechanical failure for him, the second retirement of the day. Holding our own here, though, in the closing laps, a much more chaotic GP in the last, what, 15 laps compared to the first about, uh, you know, 12 or so laps here. So, uh, we come to the final lap here in Baku. Latifi got passed by Perez, was just about a second ahead of me. Uh, just not enough pace in this car, though, to be able to go run down Latifi here, especially with the lack of straight line speed in this track house car. So at the end of the lap, it's Charles Leclerc again, who's going to come through to extend his championship lead, especially when Verstappen has a, a failure or an accident. That's going to make it so much more of a gap there between those two signs. And second, Hamilton again on the podium, but it just can't seem to do better, better than third. Magnus and Alonso fourth and fifth. Great day for Haas and Alpine as well as Ocon is up there in sixth position here as we come through the final uh, challenging corner here. Now it's just a sweeping left and right hander up ahead, and that is all that remains for us now as we uh, use up the rest of our ERS there nearly into the barrier again. I'm pretty sure that barrier on the left's new this season. I don't remember one sticking out like that last game uh, but nonetheless down the straightaway for the final time. DRS open but it's not going to be enough to close in on Latifi. We're going to come through to cross the line for a 13th place result here in Baku and with the overall pace in this car I will take that. I felt like 13th place honestly is better than the pace that we showed today uh, so overall pretty happy with the result here in Azerbaijan. George Russell surprisingly is actually going to get driver of the day. Let's head to the podium for the celebrations. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Well, Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today, but what set them apart from the rest? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres that's really where the race was won today. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. So then, Charles Leclerc, yet another victory on the season. His worst finish continues to be at Jeddah in second place, where he actually 
dominated that race, but lost uh, late to Max Verstappen. He was able to close up on him uh, due to a safety car. Uh, but with the whole R&D and the progress being made by each team right now, Red Bull is, is slowly dropping off from Ferrari, who's pulling away, and Mercedes is getting tighter and tighter with Red Bull. So it's really kind of Ferrari, then it's Red Bull, Mercedes right together, uh, battling it out there in second and third. And like I said, Ferrari just kind of can't really be touched right now. And uh, hopefully, though, something happens because they don't want to see Leclerc go run away and at this rate win the World Drivers Championship like halfway through the season uh, with the, the pace that he has been putting up. But like I said, I think last episode, it's Ferrari that we're talking about. There is very well a big opportunity they could be the Ferrari of real life here and throw it all away uh, very easily. Uh, so that's why I'm not concerned. We're not even halfway through the season yet. So there's really, uh, it's too early to kind of get involved in the championship talk here, but it's certainly uh, something alarming to see Leclerc pulling away like that over everybody versus Sapp and Sainz, Hamilton, etc. Now, as you can see us uh, trying to get some more upgrades in the car uh, post-race here in Baku. Justin Marks funding this team as much as he can. Uh, and in the next episode, we head to my home Grand Prix in Montreal. So very excited for that one. Hopefully we can put up some pace there, but you can see we're still struggling to, to make gains here. I'm really hoping we get a regulation change at the end of the season. I think that's going to be our opportunity if that happens. So I'm really hoping uh, that will happen. And usually at the end of the first season in most F1 career modes, it happens. So knock on wood, we'll have to wait and see. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. Thank you all for taking the time of your day for watching. I really do appreciate it now. So I'll see you guys in the next one for my home Grand Prix uh, in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Have a great day, everybody.